I guess the, the best way to start is I, I'd love to give people who are listening a, a snapshot of your affiliate. Like, tell me, tell me what's going on up there and, and uh, maybe a little bit of the history of the affiliate first and, and what it looks like now. Okay, sure. So um, we opened in 2012. When we opened, we had two other partners who we've since bought out, but they were great guys and good friends of ours. Um, Dan and I knew from the beginning that this was going to be our full-time gig, and Dan's been a heavily invested CrossFit athlete for 10 plus years now. Um, what is, what so, does that mean? What's heavily invested mean? Like it's uh, this is what uh, you're doing. Best, um, <laughs> So I started in, I, I read about CrossFit for the first time in 2008. Okay. And um, I was working in a, in a health club and I was a personal trainer and I was lost. You know, I didn't know what to do with my after college, you know, strength and conditioning. I played some football and um, and I didn't want to do bodybuilding and I found CrossFit and I was like, wow, this is me. And um, and so I, I competed for a lot of years and um, I just been CrossFitting like five days a week since then. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we opened in 2012. Um, we grew quickly. We kind of hit it at the right time in Syracuse. Um, there weren't very many people doing it or at least doing it well. So um, Dan's background in fitness and his experience as an athlete and his reputation as an athlete in our area um, as a regionals athlete um, really helped us kind of take off quickly. And then my experience and background is in business. So we kind of came perfect, together perfect, and did yeah. the things. So, yeah, it's been awesome. We grew fast. We've, we've every step of the way, like we just keep on kind of trying to stay ahead of the curve a little bit uh -huh. and anticipate what will differentiate us and keep us fresh and keep people coming to us and looking to us. And we're sort of untouchable now in our market. Like we've kind of, you know, spread the gap enough so that people know if you're going to be serious about CrossFit, that's where you go in Syracuse. Yeah, the, the, the real deal. Yeah. We took, we, we've attracted the best coaches, you know, yeah. and, and once that happens, it's, you know, we do everything else that we should be doing. And, and but once you've got the, the strong, strong staff um, and you and you continue to do your homework and work hard, it's um, it's self it's self propelling. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, people come come to an affiliate really to be coached. Right. So, yeah, the, the uh, best coaches attract the best people. Um, one metric of success, obviously, for CrossFit Gym would be numbers. And I can only assume that you guys have a lot of members because 179 people participated in the open alone. Like that's huge. How many, how many yeah. people do you think passed through the doors of CrossFit Syracuse? We, well, we've got 376 members right wow. now. Um, so pretty good. We do a ton of personal training business in addition to that. So, um, Dan's background and health club personal training and a few of our other coaches have a similar background. So we've got a strong, about a third of our revenue is from personal training. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we've got over a thousand alumni, so to speak. We're near two universities, so we do have a lot of students that come through and they don't stick around forever, but right. we do have probably about 80% of our membership is a more permanent population. So, so yeah. Um, That's awesome. It's, it's big. It's yeah. big. But I, I think, I don't know what a typical ratio is, but I still think our participation in the open is a large percentage of our membership base, even, even with that, those numbers. Sure. And so how, how do you, how do you bridge that gap? How do you make it happen? I mean, I know that there's not necessarily, I'm sure there's a, there's a long, long answer, but if you can boil it down to a couple of things, like how do you get people excited about doing the open? <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> it's hard with two people. Um, I'll let him take this. Um, Ellen will fill in the details. Ellen's really good with details um, because the intramural open that we run inside our gym, we, we didn't have that idea. We, we, um, we saw it in an article. Who wrote that article? Uh, Chris Cooper. Chris, Cooper, Chris yeah. Cooper. Yeah. And so we implemented it and the intramural open is definitely the reason why we had so many people into the open. Right away, initially when we opened, um, I was still qualifying for regionals. I was competing you know, all training all year to go. And so, um, you know, the head coach of the gym, the opens like, you know, a really big part of, of my life. And so, you know, it was a really big part of the gym's life. So right away, the open was a big thing. Everyone would be like, Oh, how, why are you training so hard? What are you training for? The open, what's the open? I'm like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> and, and so, you know, right, right away was a big part of our culture because it was a big part of my life. But once we found out about the intramural open, it made it much more accessible because people would see me train and they're like, whoa, that's intense. That's like competition. And I'm new and I'm, I'm not there yet. And so 
But once we did the intramural open, it, the open became a very different. It, it became an accessible thing to anyone and everyone. And uh, Ellen can tell you the details about that. Sure. So, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept. Lots of gyms do it now. But yeah, um, we basically promote the open heart from the moment registration opens, encourage people to sign up. We hold a draft in the first week of February. We usually have about 100 people signed up by then. After that, we've played around, we've changed things year to year a little bit, number of teams, scoring system, all that stuff, but essentially it's the same idea. After the draft, all the team captains and the team members start to recruit heavily, um, and we do a lot of hype on social media, on our private Facebook group. There's a lot of like banter and shit talking and just uh -huh. a lot of stuff going on that just like builds the excitement about the whole thing. Um, and really, the members do the work for us at that point. You know, they're recruiting all their friends and trying to get them to join their teams. And what's, um, what, how do you attract somebody to your team? Is it just basically like a popularity contest or so, sort of like <laughs> so loyalties? Last year, I remember someone saying, like, I will give you this old antique table I have. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's bribery. <laughs> and like, well, I, that's a good, yeah, but the, the, you know, the other, the other team, they gave me, they got gift cards. They're going to give me gift cards. So. <laughs> Yeah, there you're like, I want the gift table and 500 <laughs> in cash. <laughs> we did have to implement a rule after the first year that if you weren't registered for the draft, if you weren't registered for the open before the draft, then you were not eligible to win your team performance points. Oh, wow. So in that way, we prevented people from kind of holding out and then joining their friends team or whatever to like build some super team. Right. Um, so all the talents really included in the draft and the teams are more even performance wise that way. And well, then and so we'll doing, I imagine to... you give yourself a little, uh, you get a step ahead of the logistics of planning the, the actual events that you're going to do during the open. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at this point now it's kind of boilerplate. I mean, like I said, we make some changes year to year, but it's so much easier now than it was in year one to yeah. pull it all off. It's a lot. That first year we did it. That was just a shit show. I think we had even more the first we had year. We 196. Yeah, 196. I and think. then, and then the first, you know, after like the first week, we're like, oh no, what do we do? Like this is no, really well, hard. No, what year? That was 2016. So 16.1 was that fucking lunge workout with the oh lanes, and we were like, we have 196 uh, people. We could fit five or six people across the gym. Right. Like it was. Time. It was five. Like, what have we done? Times twenty minutes. <laughs> One hundred and ninety-six. But but that experience, like that night, we were like, oh no, oh no, and then we're like, oh no, we're screwed. <laughs> but that night, we had a viewing party at the gym, and uh, we have a bunch of engineers, and they were just like, you know, doing the math in their head. And um, within an hour, they had cleared our gym floor in a in a very efficient way. They had measured out you know, how we can get the most people in the, in the best way possible. And by the next morning at 530, it was all seamless. So, you know, f from our point of view, it was, it made, it really filled our hearts to, to have that happen. Yeah. And then from our members point of view it was like, whoa, you know, these, these people have their shit together, but it's really our community that just stepped up and, and did it. Yeah. yeah. I like I, it's good for people to hear though because part of the reason that, that I'm doing these interviews is that someone reached out to me on social media and she is uh, young in participation in the open and maybe it's even her first year I don't know the details but she said hey how can I encourage people to do the open and I thought well let's take it a step further and this is a perfect example of a story she should hear you know that you guys do have to kind of go through the fire you got to trip over yourselves a little bit and and probably screw up one or two times too yeah sure it's I think you know one of your questions was what would you recommend to somebody like that and it's just like anything in CrossFit, like expect the unexpected, be ready for anything, understand it's going to be chaos and you just have to kind of roll with it. But the excitement of it all kind of smooths over any little hiccups that you, you know, that you might have. Everybody's just totally into it. And I mean, our members live for this. It's like people start talking about it months in advance. The excitement fizzles out like just, you know, I don't know, September. It's like it goes, it lives. So I love to hear that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a big deal at our gym, and I think it always will be. We wondered, you know, after Dan, um, you know, Dan is 34 years old now. <laughs> old so man. He's sort of over the hill. <laughs> no. um, but we wondered how things would change once he stopped qualifying as an individual. Yeah. And, you know, early on, I think our yeah. reputation rode on that a lot. Um, but it's just totally, I mean, I think now – People don't even care about Dan. It's like, <laughs> yeah. which is a great thing. I mean, we're just happy that everybody's embraced it so much as their own thing now. Um, so yeah, it's good. I mean, that's the that's the key to success, right? Is making making it about them 
more than than about you because right like you're, you're not going to qualify forever however the the prize purse was was uh increased for the 35 to 39 bro so you're knocking you're knocking on that door next year he no. was in a very elite category for a 33 year old like if you did the math he was top three in the world like he was really good last year for his age but we no, had no. an intense year we had another child oh congrats thank you thank you we had our second child we expanded the gym size um and, uh, you know, when you, you, pro- you know what it's like to, to try to train like that. It's very consuming. It's a lot of time. And our first child, our, you know, our daughter, Grace, she's four now. And it's like, I just desperately want to spend a lot of time with her. So, you know, I train really hard, but, um, you know, I just, I just would rather, you know, be with my family, be, be a coach, you know, to be a regionals athlete, it's hard to do be those healthy, other things. Not yeah. be injured. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a, there's a point at, well, I mean, you know, I think that for everyone, but people have different relationships with it, but yeah, the, I mean, the reason that we do this in the first place is to make our lives better. Right. Right. And so, yeah, at some point you'll, you will have to divorce yourself from it, but it's interesting actually, since I've got you on this topic, what is your relationship with the open now that you, are kind of transitioning from competitive athlete, at least in the regional sense. Okay, well, I mean, last year it was the same as it's ever been, to do my very best, and, you know, I, I was pretty sure I wouldn't qualify. I finished, like, 45th. I need to be top 20, um, but it was still to do very well. But it, um, So this year I I have no idea how I'll finish. I, you know, I could be top 200. I could be top 500. So for me this year it's to be a good example for my members. So I have certain things I constantly say, like, you know, and it's kind of lighthearted, but, oh, are you 30? Well, you know, the expiration for rebounding box jumps was, was uh, last year. Um, so, when, if the, you know, when and if there are box jumps in the open, I will not rebound, you know, things like that. Um, you know, if you wanted to get your fastest possible time on a wad, you know, you might pull some bad reps. You might make some compromises with respect to your, your position. And um, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to stay within um, the limits of my positional stamina. I'm not going to be uh, reckless, which is, you know, the last 30 seconds of a wad, you know, 17.5, I went. I did anything anything to go faster so um i won't do those things and i'm gonna do it on friday night lights so i won't have you know my song i won't have my space you know um i won't film it or you know i won't have my camera it, so i'll just be another member essentially yeah. and um and i'm gonna enjoy friday night lights yeah. and, I, and i'll share a secret with you that you actually already know but uh you will still get tremendously fit and i'm sure you are tremendously fit and I can only imagine, like when you're in the pickup line for the kids, like you probably look like a freak <laughs> compared to the rest of <laughs> compared to the rest of the general population. So I know it's yeah. hard to divorce yourself from that, but to be it'd be awesome. And it's cool for the members to see you doing it in the trenches with them. I'm sure that really fires them up. Yeah, it's going to be exciting for them to to see that. And this year, I I took a lot of classes. You know, previous years I was doing, you know, I was either doing a you know an online program or a remote a remote coach. So I was. In that way, I wasn't as much a part of the community, and this year I'm much more a part of the community, and it's it's yeah, helped amazing. everything. It's yeah. helped everything. Yeah. I want to uh, rewind the tape a little bit. I thought the story about um, 16.1 was fantastic when you had the engineers kind of out on the floor and figuring out how you could do this kind of stuff. What would you tell back to this affiliate who's kind of young and they're just trying to do this for the first time? Um, of course, it's unknown and unknowable. We don't know what Dave Castro is going to announce, but what can you prepare for? Like, what, what are some ways that you can kind of get a, get ahead of the ball and not be completely on your heels whenever there's an announcement made? Right. I mean, we have always been a well-equipped gym, so that's something we've never had to worry about. I know you hear so much buzz from other affiliate owners all the time, like, are there going to be, you know, whatever. And so we've never, that's not a concern for us. Um, I don't know if that's a reasonable thing to ask of all affiliates, but I would say, you know, have your basics covered in that way. Um, what else? I mean, are you we, like, for example, obviously your draft is coming up next week, but are there other things that you're doing now to prepare in terms sure. of Sure. So our communication out? and organization is on point. It's, I mean, we, we start with an email with all kinds of information weeks ahead of, of time. So everybody knows exactly what's up. Um, then our coaches are making announcements every single day in classes to really just hit it home. You know, just the first time you might bring it up, people are like, Oh hell no, I'm not doing that. But by the 30th time, you know, they're ready to just give up and surrender. 
Um, so yeah, hammering the communication and telling people what to expect. People feel find comfort in knowing what's going to go down. So if you can just be very proactive about providing communication, it, it goes a really long way. Having your captains also sort of like really exactly on the same page as you in terms of you know, how things will be managed. Um, our coaching staff and the team captains in the intramural open are like huge pulling this off. I mean, it takes a serious army to, to make it all happen. So you got to build a team. You got to have people there to support you and help you help you do it. Um, I would say judges. If you have anyone who is like loves judging mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, you can be a dedicated judge because if you're running heats, they're supposed to start every 15 minutes. The wad's 10 minutes long. Um, you know, I can remember clearly like, you know, anyone can you judge can you judge you know so and um you know if you don't literally have anyone to judge all of a sudden your heat starts to become smaller and all of a sudden you know you thought you'd be done at 8 30 and it's like i gotta stay open until 9 30 and if you overextend yourself fatigue wise all of a sudden you know things could happen in week three and week four so um that was one thing if you can have some people who are gonna you know say yeah, yeah i'll help judge you know if you need help i'll be there that's that's a good one yeah, it's also I, depending on how people schedule their their wads. I mean, because of the number of people we have, we do the open wad in all regular classes Friday up until three thirty. Then we shut down the gym and open again at five thirty for Friday night lights, which is obviously all open athletes. And then all regular classes on Sundays plus our competitors class Saturday hits it. So. Um, as soon as the WAD is announced on Thursday nights, we have a hit list of things that have to happen in terms of scheduling all the heats and printing the score sheets. And like we've got a list pre-made of all the things that we're going to need to take care of because that's a busy night, getting the gym laid out and getting sure. everything ready to go by 530 the next morning. What about um, uh, on, on Thursday night? Does, do you guys have like a watch party or everybody get together and watch it together? Uh, Tell me yeah. About that. Well, we're watching you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a shout out this year. Yeah, do it. Oh. <laughs> so um, we do a projector on the wall and in the gym. In awesome. the gym. Yeah. And so that is like a unique thing, like two of the best or three of the best competing against themselves. That doesn't yeah. happen anywhere else except the open announcement. So it's it's so much fun. You know, you get to see the little details of what each athlete's doing. And then, you know, you see where someone starts to pull ahead. The second they pull ahead, you know, when you watch regionals, it's a whole field going or the game. So it's so unique in that way. And then we have a viewing party and it's usually well attended and, you know, people bring food. It's um it's informal. They stick and, around um, after until like 11 to just yeah. talk about oh, it. Yes. Like, <laughs> and it's late. For, it's, it's a, it starts at eight for you guys. So it's not over till nine. So does anybody do the workout on Thursday? Occasionally. Um, most people are too like, oh, let me think on this. Yeah, but yeah. occasionally somebody's heading out of town the next day yeah. or whatever. We always try to get people to awesome. let's just throw a few, you know, out there. But we can't always get someone with the guts <laughs> to go that short term on it. I love um, it. Yeah, but yeah, it's really good. I mean, there's always it's, it's always the same crowd and there's always like the strategist, you know, there's like those few people in the gym that just like analyze everything and they break it all down and then they, you know, deliver it to the rest of the people yeah. and yeah, it's a good night. Yeah, that's, that's, people... that's Tommy Marquez in our gym. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, got, he's got it down to a rep, you know, he's like, okay, I'm going to do oh, 18, 15, you... 12 and I'm like, dude. All I just see red. I'm just like, I just got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just focus on breathing. Um, <laughs> one more thing I got to ask you guys before you go. So it sounds like there's a competition history and background and people were drawn to you initially, Dan, because you were competing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how does it benefit people who aren't of that ilk? You know, how do, how, do you, how do you find the open to kind of benefit people who are a little bit more timid or, or anxious to jump in? The open oh. has been a formative thing for a lot of those people. Um, they were members, you know, before that first week of the open, but you can tell walking into the gym the first day, they are timid and they remain timid for a little while. They have one buddy, they've got two buddies, but they are generally like within their shell still. And then the open happens. And a lot of times those people like attract the most cheering mm -hmm. because once they start suffering, people look and are like, Oh, I remember that, mm -hmm. you know, let's go, let's go cheer for that person. And, um, and so many times those people are like, oh my God, they, they post on Facebook, they tell me in person or Ellen in person, it was amazing. Everyone was like cheering for me and supporting me. And then I did like way more than I thought I could. 
Um, and then, you know, those are our ambassadors, you know, for right. to talk to those same people. And um, so I mean, everybody yeah. has their moments. There are so many highlights and we make a really strong point of recognizing everybody's accomplishments in the open. Um, we have a great photographer who's a member, so she's familiar with everybody. She knows who to watch. She knows when to watch and she gets the moments every single time we post those pictures and people feel like professional athletes and like. I mean, it's their profile picture until the next open comes, you know? Those are the best pictures because the emotion on everyone's faces, it's so palpable. And yeah. and, and daily wads have emotion, but not like that. Yeah. So And so those photographs don't capture what's going on. And uh, so those having a photographer, if you could, is is huge. It, that would be a, a big thing. Big yeah. Thing. That's a great we one. We could send you a link if you want to some of our open albums. They're just yeah, like my it's amazing. <laughs> it was, I, I was sharing. I'll pay him forward. I, I stole one off your, your website where you can see it's, but, uh, but I saw that there was a whole collection. So I'd love to see more of them. It'd be awesome. Sure. Um, I, I, like I said, when we started, I could speak to you guys for hours and I would love to, but, um, I've got to let you go. I thank you so much though for sharing your story. And I hope that, uh, some people can, can glean some stuff off of this. Hey, can we do, we do a selfie? A selfie? You're yeah, damn definitely. right. We can do a selfie. <laughs> okay, let's see. How do we do it? No, no, no. This, you this way, this way. Okay. Oh, there we go. Wait a second. Genius. I didn't even think of this. <laughs> Come here. There we go. All right, Can you get it? Is let's there a glare? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank right. you. Oh, I Thank you so much. That was so fun. Thank you guys so much. Um, congratulations. You're doing really cool stuff. And, Thank you. And I too. will uh, I, yeah, do my damnedest to get to as many places as I possibly can. So I hope to one day come visit you guys. Yes. That'd be awesome. Yes. Nineteen point one at CFS. I like okay, it. We'll I like it a lot. There. How old is Let the how, how old is the new baby? Uh, eight months actually. So, so CrossFit he's... Games, no CrossFit Games. If he um, wants to, if he wants to. Our yeah. daughter though, she's she's gunning for it. Yeah. She will be there. I oh, no, so. I mean, sorry. I mean, will you guys bring him out to Madison? Will you guys come for a vacation? Yeah. No. Definitely. Oh yeah. I would yeah. love. I would love to go to the games and watch. Oh my goodness. It's it's this awesome. year maybe would be a would be a good year for us. Madison it's been was, an intense um, five years. You know, I'm biased. <laughs> like I, I Los Angeles is fine, but I'm biased away from it. And I I really 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 liked Madison. It was super family friendly. So I've got a six and a seven year old, and I didn't ever really bring him to L.A. because my mom would be stuck in a hotel room, and there was you know like they wouldn't stay at the venue for long. But Madison's like walking distance from a bunch of stuff it's easy access so um yeah. if you guys can make it come out all right all right cool, cool. yeah okay, thanks, great, for guys. Thanks, thanks again thank for the time you.